industrial designers and mechanical engineers and product development engineers, electronics engineers, all come with different skill sets and history and mindsets. At the end of the day, it's the merging of all those disciplines coming together that actually really um, yeah, results in a product that's on the shelf. Design and industry, uh, we are a, a global product development consultancy. Everything from industrial design, mechanical engineering, electronics engineering, software development, the whole suite of products. And really what we do is we're a service-based business to help our clients take their idea and commercialize it. This is a 3D bioprinter. Um, Pretty amazing looking, uh, striking new technology to uh, 3D print um, specimens for research. Surface Deep Sea Challenger, do you copy? Over. Jacob's rib, we're still receiving deep sea. Everything we're doing is, is unique. It, it hasn't been done before, or it, it, you know, there's a significant difference to something out on the market. We work on up to 100 products per year. And so that's everything from deep technical medtech products or maybe a mining product which could take three years to get to market. And there's some products which might take a month to work on. You know, we still work on packaging for bottles and for toothpaste containers and for shampoo. Projects these days are, are becoming more and more complex with the integration of electronics into a lot of them. DI has grown to, to incorporate more in-house technical teams across electronics and engineering um, and software. Definitely over the last five to ten years, the biggest change has been bringing electronics into the business. The team started off with just myself um, and then we slowly organically built up the business and the team uh, to where we are now, which is about 25 engineers in the electronics team. So the electronics team here is four and a half years old, um, but there are folks who've been at d and for 37 years. And it took a little while to kind of understand the, the, the way they work and, and uh, the type of approach. There can be a bit of a water and oil situation with different disciplines. In a concept phase, you're obviously drawing something and you are iterating right in front of everybody's eyes, your, your eyes, the client's eyes, and uh, electrical can often be a bit hidden away, and it's hard to see the progress or understand what those, those progresses are meaning for you. There's a PCB in there that we designed in LTM. Hence, it's, it's good to have a team in-house again so you can actually see something over their shoulder. They can show you some aspect of, that they're working on that's not in your knowledge how. The integration that you can have from early days when you're doing hand sketches, if there's actually already an understanding of the circuits or the size of the package that might be needed, versus it might have been just a real thumb in the air guess earlier on, it can be a little bit more definitive. So it can really accelerate the point where you're drawing something that's actually got some background to it. That push and pull is always just a really good way to grow a team. I think it, it gives you diversity in opinions, diversity in our process, which is really powerful. Being able to see beyond your specific skill set and your discipline, seeing the bigger picture of product development in general, is the art. That's what uh, emulsifies the team, gets everyone pointed in the same direction. Efficiency is a big part of the business and it's, it's a big part of the work we do. I think being able to bring the electronics capability in-house has, has definitely made an impact there. That's also the output, um, output driver. We collaborate with the electronics team on a, on a daily basis, you know, even from the very early stages of a project. We mainly do that through LTM 365 and the, um, you know, the MCAD co-designer plugin. The bi-directional editing is a really powerful tool. You know, gone are the days where a mechanical engineer would say, okay, move this part two millimetres to the left and then re-export a step model and send to them. Those days are gone. A lot of using LTM for us is about speed. It's about how quickly can we take the idea from someone's head and get into a physical PCB in your hand. 
because we work on so many different projects, we've got a, a template project which pulls in all the latest uh, schematic templates, PCB templates, uh, assembly drawings, uh, fabrication drawings. So that's all automated in the up-to-date templates which are pulled on the cloud. When I started here, it was so fresh. Uh, the fact of really thinking about how do you commercialize this project. Um, it's always about uh, what the user needs, uh, what the client is asking for, how do you actually get this onto the shelf. What's my favourite product? It's kind of like asking who's your favourite child. One that stands out for me has been the uh, Concourse Golf Wheels. Um, it was one of my uh, very first projects actually. Two years ago, my wife and I had twins. One of my twins had to go through the special care nursery. And I had a really interesting moment because I've always worked on the technology and so I'm really familiar with it. But in the circumstance where my son had to go through uh, CPAPs and had to get catheters inserted and was put in one of these heated cribs and in the incubator, it could have been a really scary moment for me. I knew why they were placing that three French catheter into my son and I knew that that was the right size for him and I knew that the mask attachment is the best fitment for pressure injuries for that um, type of baby. So while it could have been scary, it was this really interesting fusion of parts of my life all of a sudden. What I see a lot uh, is that a lot of the engineering product development work gets stuck in this pit that just doesn't get commercialised. I love the idea of what you work on is actually used by users. You can see how it's actually being used in helping people. You know, at the end of the day, we're developing a product that uh, is going to go out there um, into production and out onto the market, and we want that to be adopted by users. So it needs to be something that's intuitive to use, it needs to be something that looks great, um, and obviously the engineering part of it needs to also meet the requirements that are set. At the end of the day, it's the merging of all those disciplines coming together that actually really results in a product that's on the shelf. Thank you for watching Altium Stories. By subscribing and hitting the bell icon, you'll never miss out on the latest engineering stories from our channel.